Well, it says Think Pink on his back. Set. It says Think Pink on his back with a picture of the Pink Panther. He calls himself Pinky T. Pinklin Thomas. And he's a last-minute stand-in for Randy Cobb after Cobb came down with a bursitis attack. How are you ready for a fight on, on really a moment's notice? Well, I didn't find out till the fight, about the fight until uh, about 4.30 last night. And, uh, well, I, I was ready. I'm ready. Yeah. You know, I've been on the road running. Uh, I haven't had too, too much sparring, you know, but I feel like I can handle myself anyway, you know. So I'm going to go out and uh, get it over as soon as I can. Yeah. Right. Well, you saw, did you see what Greg Page did, first round knockout? Yeah, it was uh, very impressive, you know. Uh -huh. Yeah. What can we expect from you? I know you are 10-0. and 0. You've knocked out nine straight opponents. What should we be looking for from Pinklin Thomas? Another knockout. Yeah. I mean, which hand? What's your style? Give us a little bit of uh, depth about your fighting ability. Well, I don't call no rounds. And, uh, I ain't, I can, you know, I'm kind of orthodox. I, don't, uh, I punch good with both hands, so uh -huh. I'm just going to take it as it comes, you know. Okay. Good luck. Take it as it comes, and lots of luck to you. 10-0, and 0, Pinklin Thomas. He says, think pink. Let's go back to ringside Don Dunphy. All right, Len. Uh, Larry, you were telling us about Pinky Thomas and how they got him out of the casino. I got a better one than that. We were supposed to do a fight in uh, the Felt Forum of the Garden uh, quite a few years ago, and Jose Torres, who had lost his light heavyweight title, was supposed to fight, I forget, somebody. And would you believe it, his opponent chickened out about 20 minutes before the fight, and the garden was frantic. They had a television commitment, and they had no fighter to oppose Torres. And somebody remembered that they had seen Charlie Devil Green in the audience. Now, Charlie Devil Green had bought a ticket believe it, and was in the audience, and, and they got him and rushed him out there, and do you know he put Tories on the floor? I know, and, and, and uh, Tories came back to knock him out, Yes. but the fact that this kid was able to come out of the audience and put him on the floor convinced Tories that that was the end of his career. He never fought again. It's a fact, Larry. I, I Remember that, you, Jerry? Yes, I do, and that... He put Torres on the floor and almost had him out. <laughs> As a matter of fact, they made a mistake in the officiating. They, they allowed uh, Torres too much of a count. They and, sure did. Uh, Green would have won the fight. Well, Charlie Green was raising havoc about it afterwards. I don't but blame uh, him. in the second round, he succumbed to Jose Torres' power. <laughs> you know, the last time I saw Charlie Devil Green was when he was sparring partner for. Uh, Koopman, Jean-Pierre Koopman, the tiger of uh, Flanders or something, <laughs> the pussycat of Playa Ponce Beach. Anyway, I said to, I said to Charlie, how is Koopman? Has he got a chance? He says, hell, I can beat him. <laughs> and he was right. <laughs> uh, Pinklin Thomas, uh, who we're going to see here momentarily, is being handled for the first time, I should mention, by Georgie Benton. Uh, Georgie Benton is coming into the ring ahead of Pinky Thomas there. There you see him on your camera. He is a legendary middleweight from Philadelphia. Everybody thought he would be a champion. In fact, he once beat Joey Giardello just before Joey Giardello in this very building, Don, won the middleweight championship from Dick Tiger. And now Georgie Benton works for Joe Frazier. And, uh, of course, he handled Leon Spinks before it went Spinks. Uh, defeated Muhammad Ali for the heavyweight title. In the blue corner, he's wearing black trunks, trimmed with gold, weighed in at an even 200 pounds. From Norfolk, Virginia, let's make him welcome Bobby Jordan. Jordan. And his opponent in the red corner, he's wearing black trunks, trimmed with pink, Weighed in at an even 215 pounds from Pontiac, Michigan. Let's hear it and make him welcome Big Lon Thomas. Thomas, ten round. Thank you, Thomas. Bobby Jordan. Thomas, you know, he's won 10 and lost 10 with the last nine in a row by knockout. He's a boxer puncher. Bobby Jordan is 27 years old, six feet two, and he's won eight and lost three with three knockouts. He's been fighting quite a while, an experienced fighter, a good boxer, but only a fair puncher. Now we'll uh, see just how the training of uh, Georgie Benton is uh, going to affect the career of Pinklin, Pinky Thomas. Benton was a master boxer and uh, uh a real master of the sweet science, and he has had a tremendous impact on most of the fighters that 
that he has trained. Especially Leon Spinks yeah. for a while. He led Leon Spinks to uh, beating Muhammad Ali for the heavyweight championship right. of the world. All right, and then because of a personality clash, he wasn't in the corner of Spinks for the return. And of course, uh, Spinks went back to many of his amateur ways and uh, was defeated. All right, here we have round one between Pinklin Thomas and Bobby Jordan. Bobby Jordan is, uh, you're watching in color, I'm sure, is wearing the black trunks with the yellow trim and the yellow down the side. And Thomas is wearing the uh, black trunks with the pink down the side. Both have shown that they have good jabs so far. A grazing right to the head by uh, Thomas didn't do too much damage on uh, his opponent, Bobby Jordan. As we told you, Jordan is a good boxer and he picks off those punches pretty well with moving those gloves around and fights out of that crouch, which uh, up to now is uh, bothering Thomas just a little bit. It would seem to me, Don, that uh, Jordan's strategy here should be to take it easy for a few rounds and see how uh, Pink and uh, uh, Thomas's conditioning is. Uh, that's a fact. You, you don't get too much condition playing the wheels. <laughs> they got him out of the casino at 3.30 this morning asking if he wanted to fight, so we'll have to find out what kind of condition he's in. Even we got to bed before that, Jerry. <laughs> yes, oh, a few guys have been pulled out of casinos for fights, but I don't know if it's for this kind of a fight. <laughs> <laughs> we have seen that Thomas has a quick, sneaky right hand and a, a, a hard left hook. And he's all over Jordan at the moment with uh, round one almost half over. It's scheduled for 10. Thomas, a very aggressive fighter and a good counter puncher is Jordan, as you can see from that right hand. But he, Jordan is taking a lathering, and, uh, but he's boxing well defensively. He's picking off both of those punches on the glove. This could wear Thomas out. Conversely, Thomas, of course, is trying to end it quickly. Referee is Tony Perez, an experienced arbiter. And incidentally, the referee and the judges vote here in New Jersey. The referee will be picking up the slips after the round and taking them to the commission. The action slows down a little bit, but Thomas is still the aggressor. As Jordan backs into a neutral corner, and he, Thomas is solving that defense and getting by the guard. Jordan. He almost seems in pain. He has a grimace on his face. It looks as though he got thumbed. Yeah, his, his right eye, he's having trouble seeing out of his yeah, right he, eye, it appears. He may have gotten thumbed, accidentally or otherwise. Thomas is smartly working the body and the head. This is survival time right here. Right, and they're just above our HBO microphones and there is the end of round one and we go back to the corner of Pinklin, Pinky Thomas from Pontiac, Michigan. Let's have a look at a replay of that corner action and I'd like to hear your comments about what you see in Thomas, Jerry. Well, well Thomas has he's got a very strong left jab and he's a powerful puncher but if you'll notice Jordan he's got the hands up by the face he's not getting hit any solid shots on the chin good jab there that snuck through he really did no damage, and he may wear himself out because of his late entry. Reminds me of your, your fight, your comeback when you fought Muhammad Ali, when everybody was saying, can Ali go the distance? When <laughs> well, Ali came out of his uh, enforced exile. We never <laughs> got to experience anything because of our <laughs> typical cut. And know? incidentally, Jerry, here is the same referee who stopped that fight, Tony Perez. Yes, Did you he, think it should have been stopped? Uh, well, <laughs> no fighter ever thinks a fight should be stopped if he really wants to be a fighter. But Rudy Perez is one of the best in the business. Very gracious of you. Here's round two. Scheduled for ten rounds. Bobby Jordan in the black and the yellow, or the gold. Pinky Thomas in the black and the pink. And has been the aggressor. A trickle of blood from Jordan's no uh, nose. Well, Jordan always looks pained in there, apparently. That's his... Uh, style, I suppose. He probably looks pained walking down the street. That's just the way he looks. I just noticed that Thomas goes in there after throwing a right who leaves himself wide open, and he was tagged for it. He got hit a pretty decent right hand in the last round. Hey, if you look at the, the bodies, Pink and Thomas has, has almost a perfect body for heavyweight boxers. Not an ounce of flab on him anywhere. 
But now we're going to find out what kind of condition he's in. At, at 215, he's very trim. Jordan may be styled a journeyman fighter, but uh, he's usually around at the finish. Whether he will be in this one, I don't know. A little swelling on the right eye of uh, Bobby Jordan. Jordan fighting back well, and again, Thomas is getting through the guard and being counter-punched well by Jordan. A couple of beautiful, and there's another one. Thomas is vulnerable to the right hand, and now the left hook. And Thomas may well be tiring. It looks to me like, like he's trying a little too hard, Don. He could be. And he may punch himself out. Thomas is spot hitting now. He's also keeping his hands down and he might get countered by Jordan who well, he is does. a heavyweight. He, he's, he's, a, he's vulnerable to that right hand. And he's been tagged with it time and again in this round. There's another one. Thomas is being rocked. He took some good shots and came right back though. He was almost daring him to hit it, to, to hit him there at the very end, but uh, Jordan's left, the right eye is almost closing. There's been little to choose between them in the fight. Thomas had the edge in the first round, and Jordan has had the edge in this round. Thomas is showboating a little bit and leaving himself wide open around the head. You fight us this size, anything can happen. I'm sure an Bobby an Jordan knows it. Maybe we'll get a shot of that right eye between rounds, the right eye of Bobby Jordan. It is within inches, uh, or, or less than an inch of being closed for the evening anyway. We're going to take a look at another replay here where Jordan, with his back to the ropes, uh, got in some awfully good punches on Pinkton. It didn't stun Thomas. There you see a right hand. Look at that left hand that down low. No, no defense. That was a, it was a glancing shot. Penguin Thomas, I guess, was kind of expecting it, but you never want to open yourself up to a heavyweight. They can punch and can do damage at any time. He's trying to say to his opponent, you can't hurt me, but uh, a 200-pound man, if he hits you often enough, is going to hurt you. There's the right eye of uh, Bobby Jordan. There's not much vision left. That in looks, that little space. That looks more like a rat than a mouse to me. It's, <laughs> it's a pretty big, big one. Yeah. I have to agree with you, Larry. There's a trainer manager, Jimmy Lumpkin, was uh, trying to uh, reduce the swelling there. Lumpkin? What a name for a guy who's <laughs> treating a mouse. Uh, I'll tell you one thing. You're right about it, Don. Uh, Bobby Jordan looks like he's in constant pain up there. Anyway, here's round three. Bobby Jordan in the black trunks with the gold trim. Pinky Thomas, the black trunks with the pink trim. And I, I hate to use the cliche, but it's a battle of attrition. And Jordan is in his favorite spot on the ropes in a neutral corner and doing the same thing he did in la last round, nailing Thomas who leaves himself open. Thomas tries to get through those gloves defense and does once in a while and doesn't at other times. Jordan is fighting a smart fight. Thomas is not at the moment. Franklin Thomas is uh, considerably stronger than Jordan, but I think uh, the better all-around boxer is Bobby Jordan. He's making all those punches, catching them all on the gloves and making him slip and miss, and uh, that could wear out Thomas. Now Thomas is shifting to the body. And is getting through the guard now. <laughs> yeah, he's, hitting, he's landing some heavy Yes, heavy he is. Fire as right Jordan here. stays on the ropes. <laughs> it's round three, scheduled for ten. Tony Perez, the referee. This fight can be held in about a five-foot ring. Right. Maybe in a phone booth. <laughs> he's throwing powerful punches, but they're all being caught by the gloves of Bobby Jordan. If one of them does happen to slip through with a Jordan power, has found him again with that loose right hand on the open chin. And there it goes again. And that followed one by did, the left hook. That did a little bit of damage and Tom is not going to say it didn't.
Jordan obviously worried about his closing right eye. They're in the same spot again. Call that Jordan's alley. And uh, Thomas pecks away at that left, at that right eye. Jordan with the gloves up high, waiting for Thomas to drop his guard. Big flurry, and that, that's the type that could cause a fighter to punch himself out, couldn't it, Jerry? Sure can, and punches that, uh, that don't do any damage or miss take a little bit more out of you than the ones that do land. He's expending an awful lot of energy keeping Jordan in the corner. It may take its toll. But so far, he's... Well, it's been a good round for Thomas. He's had two good rounds, and Jordan's had one. There's the bell, ending round three. Now, let's go back to Len Burnman, who's with Jerry Cooney and Dennis Rappaport in the dressing room. Thanks, Don. Jerry Cooney's up next. First, Jer Jerry, your appraisal of what you're seeing in this fight. Uh, two good fighters. Bobby George is a good boxer. It's uh, being a little cutie, and the other guy is, is a stronger puncher trying to get inside. We'll get back to you before your fight. Mike Jones, is Pinklin Thomas a possible opponent for Jerry? Yes, he is. He's a very strong boy. Mm -hmm. He stands up straight. He's a little bit too much exposed, though. Uh -huh. Dennis Rappaport, your appraisal. I think Jordan is gambling, and Thomas is going to punch himself out. And he has a terrific pair of legs, and it's a calculated risk. So it's going to be interesting. You're not going to gamble when you get up in a few minutes, right? I'll do the best I can. Best he can. He's 21 and 0. We'll see Jerry Cooney, managed by Dennis Rappaport and Mike Jones, coming up in the next fight. Let's go back to ringside now and Don Dunphy. You don't have to All right, there you have again the uh, right eye of Bobby Jordan, and it, may I say it's not getting any better. Bobby Jordan in the black trunks with the gold trim, backing towards the ropes on the other side of the ring now. Pinklin Thomas. The black trunks and the pink stripe down the side. That right eye right now, Don, looks like it's just about to burst open. It could any moment. Might be a good thing for him if it does. It could take some of the swelling down, definitely. But the only thing he can see out of that eye is that left hand hitting him again. That's continually landing on that eye. No matter, it might lessen the swelling if it opens up, but nobody wants to see a fighter get cut. At the moment, it's a bit one-sided, with Thomas carrying the fight and seemingly pulling away, although every so often, Bobby Jordan will come back with a punch like he just threw a moment ago. He had one good round, the second, and Thomas had two good rounds. Here we are in round four of a ten-rounder. Thomas's corner has given him instructions not to flurry, uh, reinforcing what you said in the last round, Jerry, that it's too much effort for too little gain. He's not landing the punches because Bobby Jordan's a good defensive fighter. The gloves are up there blocking the punches. At the moment, Thomas is bothered by the defense of Jordan. Now we've got Thomas against the ropes for the first time. And we turn around as as Jordan is whacking him now, it reverses itself. Jordan is back to the just above our HBO cameras here. Thomas started to play a little game there. Right. Could, could cost him later. Sometimes those games are a sign of fatigue, a way of trying to buy time. But right now he's coming on very strongly. And right now, uh, Thomas looks in real good shape. He still leaves himself open around the head, however. He's throwing strong punches, but if you watch him, mean, he's not turning his body in, into the punches. They're strictly arm punches right now. No power behind them. Jordan seems to have more power in his, although they're not all landing. Another couple of good belts to the body by Thomas. Yeah. Jordan's still on the ropes. Jordan's going to have a mouse on his stomach soon. <laughs> At the moment, it's all Thomas with an occasional flurry by Jordan. 
The referee is not needed, and he smartly stays out of the picture. While we have a minute, Len, what's coming up on HBO? Well, Don, more sports action coming our way on HBO. Tuesday, January 8th at 7.30, it's 1979 in sports, as HBO captures the headline-making moments of the past year, and what a year it's been. From Willie Stargell to Tracy Austin, from Ali to Sugar Ray, Magic and Bird in the NBA, the Steelers roll on, the Canadiens ice another Stanley Cup, all this and much, much more on 1979 in sports with Barry Tompkins and Larry Merchant. That's Tuesday, January 8th, 7.30, 6.30 Central Time, right here on HBO. Don? Well, here we are in the, the corner of uh, Bobby Jordan again with Jerry Lumpkin, his uh, trainer manager. On the outside is John Hunter. Let me ask you, Jerry, you too, Don, was there a time when a trainer in a really big fight might deliberately lance a mouse like that? It has happened before. Oh, yes. uh, Esme Laguna fought uh, Ken Buchanan. Buchanan's left eye was completely closed, and they lanced the eye to open it up and take the swelling down. And he went on to beat Laguna to, to retain his title. I don't know if it's legal anymore, is it, Jerry? Well, it's not a matter of... may not have been of, legal then. It's not a matter of legality. It's <laughs> a matter of uh, survival. <laughs> All right, round five. Pinky Thomas, who was a substitute for undefeated Randy Cobb, who, as Len and I have told you earlier, came down with bursitis last night, undefeated Randy, and that's a shame because he is undefeated and he's a good heavyweight with great prospects. He's won about 13 fights, all of them by KOs. I hope we can see him again sometime. You're knocking out heavyweights. I don't care what the caliber they are. If you're knocking them out, you've well, got to have some punching ability. Maybe Caesar's Boardwalk Regency can get them together again. Anyway, it's uh, the pattern of the previous rounds. Jordan working off the ropes and Thomas working on him. And being much more deliberate and calculated now, perhaps because he is a little tired. He may be pacing himself. We're talking about Thomas, who took this bout on less than 24 hours' notice. Well, he should be saving his energy. He's got uh, a few more rounds to go, and the way Bobby Jordan is fighting, it looks like it's going to go the distance. But anything can happen at any time. Well, you can't tell, Jerry and Larry, because every so often, Thomas does leave himself open, and uh, Jordan connects. But you have to question the punching power of Bobby Jordan. Right. He's, uh, he's landed some clean shots on Thomas and done no real damage. Yeah, it's obvious that Thomas is contemptuous of Jordan's punching ability. Oh, I like that one there. <laughs> I have to question both of their punching abilities. Uh, it's, it's hard to question a man that's had nine consecutive knockouts, but I haven't seen any extensive power here. Jordan goes back into his early defensive tactics out of fighting, fighting covering up out of a bob and a weave occasionally. A little relaxing by Pinky Thomas. I'd say a little bit more resting than relaxing. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, if Jordan's strategy is to have uh, Thomas try to punch himself out, he's doing a good job of it. <laughs> <laughs> but he's running out of rounds to survive. The referee is Tony Perez, who has not had a great deal to do so far. This is one of the slower rounds of the fight. The earlier ones were, were much faster, and uh, some in the audience are getting, getting a little irritated at the lack of action. Jordan's right eye is just a slit now. He can just barely see out of it. That's going to be tough to defend against a uh, left hook or a left jab. Now the crowd voices its irritation at the uh, lack of action in the fight, and the commission doctor has gone up there now. That's Dr. Frank Doggett, who is... Take a uh, look at the, those last uh, 15 or 20 seconds of the round as Thomas leans in on Jordan, and he's just trying to impose his strength here on his opponent and not use himself up too much. It's been rather a carbon copy just of every round. It's just been rather the same. Thomas putting the pressure on him. Jordan staying in the corner. The fight is over. The fight is over. The doctor, Frank Doggett of the commission, has told Tony Perez, the referee, that that is it. And the winner, winning.
winning his 11th fight and 10 in a row by knockouts is Pinklin Pinky Thomas. While we have a moment here, I'd like to tell you about Frank Shane, who is the very good ring announcer in there, and he's uh, talking to his wife, Eva. Eva Shane is one of the judges tonight, and they are the only uh, ring announcer judge that in captivity, Larry, as far as I know. Who are also man and wife, you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> They're married. <laughs> I would say that was a fairly impressive performance by Vicky Thomas. Uh, on about uh, 16 hours notice. Bobby yeah. Jordan unable to continue. The winner by a TKO at the end of the fifth round, Pink Long Thomas. Thomas. Pinklin Thomas continues his undefeated ways. Won 11 now and lost none. All right, here is uh, Jerry Quarry with the winner. Jerry? Hi, we're with the winner, Pinklin Thomas. We call you Pinky, is that all right, Pinklin? Yeah, that's all right. Well, you did a good job of pounding and staying on top of him, but he was into a defensive shell that was kind of tough to penetrate. That's right. Well, it was kind of tough for me, Jerry. You know, I, I, have, I haven't fought in uh, five months, and I haven't boxed over seven rounds in that time. And then to catch you in a casino at 3.30 in the morning, that makes it rather difficult to come out here and perform. Uh... I was broke from losing my money in the casino. And, uh, well, you know, if I could have helped the promotion, I helped myself too also. Well, you did a good job and all. Maybe you got some of the money back here in this fight that you lost on the tables, guys. Right. Well, we wish you the best of luck and have a good future. All right. Now back to Don and Larry. All right. There we have Another victory for an undefeated fighter, which is uh, three undefeated fighters on the card tonight. Jerry Cooney, Greg Page, who won. Cooney, who's coming up in a while, and uh, Pinklin Thomas. I also want to uh, remind our viewers of what I said earlier about Georgie Benton. I think that, in large measure, the fact that uh, Thomas was able to perform uh, tonight at all, much less as convincingly as he did, uh, however weak the opposition, can be attributed to George Benton. Benton is really a master teacher. Uh, I spoke with him this afternoon, and uh, he had never seen Thomas actually perform in the ring. Thomas had been brought to him as a prospect, as many young fighters are. He liked what he saw, and he thinks he has someone here who in another couple of years could be a force in the heavyweight picture. Larry, we were talking about George Benton helping Leon Spinks defeat Ali for the title in Las Vegas and then walking out of the second bout uh, after about the fifth round because he didn't like what he saw. Uh, uh, are you akin uh, to that? Yes, uh, there was a personality conflict with another of uh, Spinks' older handlers. Uh, Spinks was not listening quite as well after he became champion as before he had become the champion. And uh, Georgie was very unhappy with the situation, as I recall it. In one round, the, the other handler was able to tell to, uh, Spinks what to do. And in, the other, and in the next round, Georgie Benton was. It was a situation that was untenable. And uh, because he is a man who really cares, he just said, this is not any good for anybody. And he is one of the best. Now let's take a look at some of the upcoming events on HBO Sports.